here again in Phoenix, just for consideration. Our Lady of Peace, Our Lady of Sorrows, and that uh, we have the, the Our Lord, Our Lady has seven sorrows, traveling the seven stages of life, and that uh, that remember that Our Lord Jesus Christ, as Bishop Jean points out, points in Augusta, Our Lord Jesus Christ cannot become man in order to live. He cannot become man in order to live because he is life. He became man in order to die on the cross for our sins. Therefore, his mother, who would be the mother of God, would not simply be the mother of God, the mother of the King, mother of the Lord Jesus Christ, but she must be the mother of sorrow. She must also be the mother of sorrow because Christ did come in order to die. And also, considering the mystery of suffering and the mystery of death in general, remember that it's true that Adam decided to commit a sin, and because he decided to commit a sin, death entered the world. And it makes very, very clear, because of the sin of Adam, death entered the world. But then Christ conquered sin and conquered death by his own death. And that the conclusion, therefore, of this mystery of death is that God intended death and sorrow to be something only in this world. We're not meant to have sorrow when we pass the next world. So that whatever sorrow there is, is going to be experienced by those that love God only in this world. That's one reason why the scripture says, the sorrow of the just man, the sorrows of the just man are many, but the sorrows of the fool are infinite. <coughs> the just man has many sorrows, the girl will come a time when his sorrows cease. He also has many sorrows because his sorrows will not be uh, infinite, without limit on this earth. Whereas the fool has infinite sorrows, he has so many more sorrows than the just man while he's here on this earth, followed by infinite sorrow in hell. So we have to choose our life. Are we going to have a life of sorrows that are many, or a life of sorrows that are infinite? And we see in the world today, why do the majority of people not want to be good Catholics? Why do they not want to follow the gospel? Because the gospel hurts. Because being a good Catholic is difficult. Because there are too many rules and regulations. Whereas if you can step away from the Catholic life, you can do whatever you want on Sunday. You can <coughs> sin with whoever you want. Whatever woman, whatever man you want to sin with, you can sin with. You can follow whatever rules you want in your own life. And therefore, you should have so many less sorrows. But what has happened? We now have a world in which all of men, all in quotes, almost all of men, change women, change men whenever they like, don't worship God, follow their own will and desires, believe the lies that are told to them by the modern world, and live a life without any morals. Let's count their sorrows. They are infinite. Forget about the sorrows they're going to experience in eternal damnation and hell. The sorrows in this life are infinitely more than the sorrows of the just man. They, are, they cannot trust whomever they love because whoever they love is going to abandon them. They can't trust the government. They can't trust their friends. They can't trust their bank accounts. They can't trust their health. The doctors are making, doctors want to make so much, Dr. Fauci wants to make so much money, he is going to give you vaccines that are going to murder you. He is going to make you sick. You can't trust what the doctors say about this idiotic coronavirus lives that are, that are being spread throughout the world and causing struggles everywhere in the world. That these wicked laws. And are, the, are wicked men having less sorrows? Count the sorrows. The Holy Ghost says, the sorrows of the wicked men are infinitely more. <laughs> Look about the man that decides to be a drunk. The man that decides to be a druggie. The man that decides to be immersed in the temptations of the, the, the sins of the flesh. The man that is immersed in greed. The man that is immersed in pride. All of them have miserable, miserable lives. They live in complete sorrow. And that's why, what do they have to do? They have to take medications. They have to go to the psychiatrist. And the psychiatrist is paid a lot of money. And what do you pay a psychiatrist for? You go to a psychiatrist and you point out to the psychiatrist that you aborted half of your babies that you got divorced 15 times, that you lived a life of misery. And what is the life of a psychiatrist supposed to do? It's not your fault. 
You are fine. You are good the way you are. Don't feel bad about your immorality. And then you pay the psychiatrist to tell you lies. Does it make you feel better? No. He has to give you medication. Because if you're asleep, maybe you won't feel as bad. But then you can't sleep. You can't sleep because you've got a guilty conscience. So you have to take sleep medications and natural sleep pills and all kinds of medications. Then there are more sicknesses that come and more misery that comes. Count the sorrows of a life of mortal sin and you will find. What about the sorrows of the just man? He must also have sorrows in this life. But what are his sorrows? He has sorrows that come because his friends turn against him because he follows the law of God. But what happens? He finds true friends. Our Lord Jesus Christ was abandoned by everyone. He was abandoned by his own apostles. And he had such great sorrow in his humanity when he walked the way of the cross. But what happened during that way of the cross? Veronica came and with greatest of love wiped his face. And imagine the comfort in our Lord Jesus Christ to see Veronica step past those soldiers to take a cloth and wipe his face. And he met his own mother and she held him up on the way of, the, of sorrows. And her love for him was so much greater than all the hatred of the men and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the soldiers and all the great sinners that despised him and hated him. He felt their hatred and it caused him sorrow. But then he felt the love of his mother. And that comforted him. Before he went on the way of the cross, he sweat a bloody sweat. But what does the scripture tell us? And just in that small gap between the third hour of the bloody sweat and the coming of Judas to betray him, the angels came and ministered to him. He was comforted by the angels for a brief period. And when he stood before Pilate and he stood before Herod, he had the, the confidence of the truth inside of his heart. He is the truth, but he had the confidence of truth inside of his human heart. And, therefore, and he also knew the victory was going to be his. And therefore the sorrow of being condemned by Caiaphas was overcome by the joy of knowing that he would be the one that would have the victory. And therefore he let out his power at one point when he said to Caiaphas, you Caiaphas, you shall see the Son of Man come in great power and majesty. And Caiaphas shook in his boots. His knees were terrified. He was petrified for the moment that Christ showed forth his power. And the power of Caiaphas was very brief. And his glory was very brief. And when he walked back that very night, after he was so happy for having put Jesus Christ to death, what did Caiaphas see? He, with his own priestly eyes, saw the veil of the temple ripped apart. He saw the presence of God go out from the temple. He saw an earthquake damage and crack the temple. He saw the wrath of God. And Caiaphas was shaken with great sorrow. And when Caiaphas was with that sorrow and terror, and then he was worried that Jesus Christ might rise from the dead. He had so many worries before he would die and go to hell. Jesus Christ's worries ended at 3 p.m. And he passed to go and speak to the souls in, in, in limbo. Then he waited for the third day to rise in his victory. And consider the sorrow of the saints. Daniel was in great hunger, and Daniel was abandoned, and he was in the lion's den. But the lions acted as and laid at his feet, and he was able to pet them, and he was able to be warmed by their fur in the cold of the den. And he was comforted by the lions who was supposed to eat him. And he became very hungry. And in his hunger, what happened? Habakkuk came and brought him food. When Jesus Christ at the end of 40 days was extremely hungry and he had the sorrow of hunger and he had withstood the test and he had conquered the world, the flesh and the devil and the three temptations of the desert, immediately angels came and comforted the man of sorrows. So let us count the sorrows of Jesus Christ and his humanity, the sorrows of the mother of sorrows, and the sorrows of a man living in mortal sin. And do the math. Which one has more sorrow? The scripture is right. 
the one that is in mortal sin, the one that has a guilty conscience, this one has so many more sorrows. He is in so much more misery in this life. And so those who want to have less sorrow and those who want to have peace, they must turn to God, turn to the truth of the faith, turn to the Holy Gospel, and you will discover your sorrows will be many, but they will not be infinite. Now, what is the difference between many and infinite? It is a massive, massive difference. So few are the sorrows of the just that when he passes into judgment, he will find it hard to remember his sorrows. And then as he looks back over his life, he will see how many times he was visited by the consolation of God. The, our Lord Jesus Christ also, when he walked the way of the cross, he was in great agony, but he saw the victory. And that is why he said, when a woman is about to have a baby, she is in great sorrow and tribulation because her hour has come. But when the child is born, the joy of the child makes her forget those sorrows. And this is the way it was with the Lord Jesus Christ as he walked away at the cross. He had the sorrow of the bloody sweat, the sorrow of being mocked, the sorrow of the scourging, the sorrow of the crowning with thorns, the sorrow of being abandoned by his apostles. And yet at the same time, he realized those apostles were going to repent. Those apostles were going to come back to him. And he told his apostles, you shall be sorrowful for a short time, for a little while. But after a little while, I shall come back to you and you shall have joy that no man can take from you. So much joy happens during the course of this holy cross that down the last 2,000 years, no man has ever been able to find happiness in this world. No man has ever been to have great joy in this world who has not learned the beauty of the Holy Cross. We must experience the cross in our lives. And the cross is called <laughs> sorrow. And yet this sorrow has with it interlaced, like hydrogen and oxygen are, are come together to create water. And hydrogen is likened to the sorrow. And oxygen is likened to the joy. And there is, but the oxygen gives life, and the oxygen makes it all, makes it create the life that is, is always mixed with that hydrogen, so that you can never have water, which does not have both hydrogen and oxygen. And in the, in the life of Jesus Christ, and the life of following Christ, there can never be sorrow that is not with joy. If there's no joy, if there's no peace, if there's no joy inside the heart, there's something wrong. There will always be periods in which we weep and mourn, in which we fear, in which we have struggles. But if Jesus Christ is inside of us, and if we love him, even though we are sinners, there will always be joy mixed with our sorrows. And what stories do you tell anyway when you grow older? You tell the stories of your great struggles. You tell the stories of your great battles and how these were the most joyous times of your life. When you went to a great battle, to a great difficulty, and overcome obstacles, overcame great obstacles, and therefore the sorrows are in fact of the just, the sorrows are in fact the beginnings of joy. Whereas the sorrows of the damned are too many to be counted, and they are the beginning of infinite sorrow, and, they, and, and they, this sorrow we do not want. Let us love our Lord Jesus Christ and ask the mother of sorrows, teach us the beauty of sorrow, the joy that can be found in sorrow, the peace and love that can grow inside of a heart, only of those that know sorrow like the Holy Mother. We're going to bless you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.